Hi everyone, this video is an introduction to the City of London. It's come up in a number of conversations and things I've read lately, so I wanted to find out a bit more about it. I'm no expert, but I've done some research and made this presentation. So I'm just going to read it out to you and maybe add in a few extra details as well. And I hope you find it interesting. So the City of London is a city, ceremonial county and local government district. The other city within a city in London is Westminster, which is also a borough. The nickname of the city is the Square Mile because that's about how big it is. Um, along with Canary Wharf, it's the main business district of London containing the Bank of England, London Stock Exchange. And interestingly, I read that in 2022, 12.3% of the City of London residents have been granted non-domicile status to avoid paying tax in the UK. So population of the city is about 8,000 people. So that's what, about 900 ish people. Um, Lloyds of London, which is a big insurance company, is in the city. Over 500 banks have their headquarters there. Lots of other financial services, businesses. Law is centred there around Temple and the Inns of Court. And of course, the media along Fleet Street. So the City of London and New York are the two financial capitals of the world. So the area of the city was London at the time of Roman rule and had a wall built around it. This is in the first century up until the Middle Ages, but it's now just a very small part of Greater London. That's it there. This is the whole of London. And this is a close up. The pink part is the city. And here shows the other boroughs that border the city and the river to the south. Okay, this was a woodcut from Tudor times, so around the 1500s, again showing the city here, really densely built on and populated, and mainly farmland around it. Here's the river, one bridge, London Bridge going across, Southwark is a little bit built up, but around it again is farmland. Okay, so London refers to the whole city of 32 boroughs, um, including the area of the City of London. This has been the case since 1888 when the County of London was created. This lasted until 1965 and corresponded to the area of Inner London. In 1965, the County of London was replaced with the larger Greater London Administrative Area and local authorities. So the local authority for the city is called the City of London Corporation. Um, another interesting thing, there are two underground rivers, the Warbrook and the Fleet, which are tributaries of the Thames, and they were built over during the expansion of the city. They now flow through culverts or are part of the sewage system. So um, still a lot going on under the city. You wonder what else might be there. Um, there are also many gardens in churchyards. So a lot of the churches um, were bombed in World War II. Um, a number have been rebuilt and most of the churchyards are really beautiful gardens now. Okay, lots of historic sites within the city of London. We've got St Paul's Cathedral, the Royal Exchange, Mansion House, which is here, which is the Lord Mayor's official residence the Old Bailey um, courtrooms, London Wall, this is part of it, but there's little fragments just dotted around the city. So it's remains of the Roman wall built around the city from AD 200. Smithfield Market, Leadenhall Market here, Bank of England headquarters, um, the Inns of Court um, that I mentioned before, and also the Tower of London, which was part of the old um, city walls around the perimeter. Okay, two things I wanted to mention are the Peasants' Revolt, which um, came to a head in the City of London, and the head of the Peasants' Revolt was Watt Tyler, and he was killed by, I believe, the Lord Mayor of the City of London at the time. Um, also, the Great Fire of London started and burnt out most of this area. 
Um, and I read that Nostradamus had predicted the Great Fire of London. So people knew about this and were reluctant to extinguish it because it was part of the city's destiny, according to Nostradamus. Don't know how true that is, but it was interesting. Anyway, that allowed the city to then be rebuilt by Sir Christopher Wren, who built, um, designed and built St Paul's Cathedral and a lot of other buildings in the city today. He was a Freemason and they say the city of London is mapped out according to sacred geometry. So onto the City of London Corporation, which runs the City of London. It has its own police service, mayor, courts, laws, flag, and land outside its area. So Epping Forest, which stretches north through London and beyond, and Hampstead Heath, both owned and run by the City of London Corporation, um, Epping Forest, Hampstead Heath. This is a view of the city. And this is the Guildhall, which is where sort of the administrative headquarters of the City of London are. So interesting to note here, this um, situation is the same in all three independent city states, the others being Washington DC and the Vatican City. They are countries within countries, but only the Vatican City has officially been given that title. But the way Washington DC and City of London are run and managed is the same. Okay, so the city is a privately owned corporation and independent state occupying the square mile. The corporation is headed by the Lord Mayor of the City of London, who is different to the Lord Mayor of London. The city is made up of 25 wards or areas with all the administration in the Guildhall. And the city is not part of England and it is not subject to the monarch or parliament or any of their laws. Now, the crown does not refer to the king or queen of England. It's actually an independent committee of 12 to 14 men who rule the city. They dictate to parliament who then act on their direction. And the British monarchy, so the royal family, is a figurehead for this committee called the Crown. The monarch rules parliament and has authority over the prime minister and the government through a Vatican knighthood called the Order of the Garter. Um, so the Crown rules the City of London Corporation, which includes the Bank of England and the media and anything else based there. Um, I also found out two areas within the city, the inner and middle temples, where all the legal things happen, are called inner enclaves. They are not governed by the city of London. Um, I'm not going to read this whole slide here, but it's got some quite interesting information. You may just want to pause on it. Um, I'll carry on in a few seconds. Okay, so that was more historical information. I'm moving on now to more of the symbolism and ideas of power associated with the city. So first thing is the London Stone. This is a historic limestone rock housed behind a glass panel here at 111 Cannon Street in the city. Previously, it was behind an iron grill until 2018, but then I believe there was a building demolition. They moved the London Stone to the Museum of London, and now I believe it's here. I haven't actually been there to see it, but I'm interested in seeing it. Um, and from my research, it appears to be here now. Okay, there are several theories about this stone and where it came from and what it means. Um, in the 12th century, it was a transportation landmark, so it marked reaching the centre of London. In the 17th and 18th centuries, um, they said it was a Roman distance marker from London to other towns around England. Um, sometimes it's called the Stone of Brutus, who was a mythical Trojan leader and possibly the founder of London in 1100 BC, long before the Romans got there. 
Some say it is part of the remains of a stone circle on Ludgate Hill, which is where St Paul's Cathedral now stands. But before that, there was a wooden St Paul's Cathedral that built, uh, burnt down in the Great Fire of London. And before that, there were traditional sort of pagan Celtic um, sort of a, a place of worship. Um, Possibly it's the remains of an altar for all Druidic sacrifices, linking in with that idea of the stone circle. Um, medieval kings and queens would visit the stone um, to symbolise their taking control of London. So it symbolises control of the city. Possibly it's the King Arthur stone that Arthur pulled um, the sword from to become King of England in the um, myth of King Arthur. Um, I've also read that it is part of the city's sacred geometry that I talked about with Sir Christopher Wren's design of the new city and should not be moved lest it um, uh, throw that sacred geometry out of balance. Okay, some other symbolism. So this is the emblem of the City of London. This Latin um, motto means Lord guide us. It's got the St George's Cross, who is the patron saint of England, and also the dragons here from that legend. This red sword is the sword of St Paul's, who is the patron saint of the city of London with St Paul's Cathedral in the center. Um, we've got the dragons, which are symbolic in Wales. Um, dragons symbolize power and authority of rulers so perhaps it symbolizes that of the rulers of the city possibly the sword is um king arthur's sword that we mentioned with the stone so he was a farm boy traveled up to londinium the roman city and there was a competition and whoever could pull the sword from the stone in this competition would be the next ruler of england um, and there's also a lot of dragon statues around the city of london you get these border stones when you're crossing from the other boroughs into the city that have the emblem or a dragon. Here's the emblem on a horse's blanket. So dragons in British folklore, they guard treasure, wells, springs and caves. We know there's underground water um, under the city. There are also links to earth energy and subterranean forces with dragons, which again makes me wonder what else is underground in the city. Okay, so back on to Sir Christopher Wren and the Great Fire. Um, I've mentioned about Nostradamus's prediction and people didn't want to interfere with it. Um, there are lots of books about ley lines and sacred geometry and sacred sites in London. One of them is Chris Street's The Ley Lines of London. So this is a picture from that book with the pentagram sign, which is a positive symbol I've spoken about in some of my other videos. It represents balance and harmony in nature when it's upright. Okay, um, there is this blurb here on the back of the Ley Lines of London book, which says, London's lays can lead you to magical places, to the soul of the city, and to an understanding of the hidden unity which connects our ancient sacred sites to each other, and also links our spiritual dimensions to theirs. To our ancestors, these locations were places of the gods, places of healing, places of power, places of vision, initiation, inspiration, and revelation they still are. Um, there's another researcher called David Furlong. Um, he has a website called London's Ley Lines. So I found this diagram which has a lot of sacred sites here in the city um, marked out and some connections drawn between them. Um, I haven't read the much else that he's done. I just found these on his website, but you may want to do a bit of further research there. Ley lines are energy lines that crisscross the landscape. So we've got um, the Michael line and the Canterbury line that runs straight through central London. Um, oh, I just want to point out here, I also read in my research about a portal to an alternative dimension located in the garden of St, that should say, Marlebone Church. 
I'm not sure exactly where that is, but I'd like to look it up. Apparently this portal stretches all the way up to Primrose Hill in North London. I also read that occultist Alastair Crowley lived for a time in the city at Chancery Lane. And he had that group, the Order of the Golden Dawn. I believe Dion Fortune, the famous psychic, was part of that group, um, but left due to psychic attack, which led her to write her famous book about psychic attack. And then she then based herself at Primrose Hill. And that is it, everybody. So I hope you found that interesting. Lots of information there about the city. Um, and worth looking into even more if you're interested and even better visiting if you can. So I live in London. I live in East London on the other side of the city. And sometimes I catch a bus or even just walk through into central London, crossing over the city. And you do feel the energy frequency change um, in the city. It's not necessarily better or worse, but it is different to the rest of the city. It's rather like when you do a land border crossing and you just feel the mood and the frequency and the energy change instantly once you get into the new country. It does feel like that. So um, have a visit if you can and see what you pick up yourself. Okay, thanks for listening, everyone.